So now we're going to look at finishing things off here with regards to the API gateway, at least temporarily. Um, and we're going to be adding in firstly, the ability to log out. So I guess it's pretty straightforward, um, quite similar to what we already have. We just need to have something here called delete user session, spell like that. And then we're actually just gonna do colon. I'm gonna put a Boolean here like so. So this one here, you might expect us to pass in a session ID or something similar, but the problem is we actually can't pass any session ID. And the reason for that is because we don't have the ability to do so under these circumstances. And the reason is because if you think about this from the perspective of a front end API, we actually can't be passing in the session ID. Well, specifically the front end API shouldn't even know about the session ID. So like, for example, part of the reason why we uh, have a HTTP only cookie for the user session ID is that we specifically don't want this information to be going uh, to the front end JavaScript or the front end client. Um, and part of that here as well is we need to understand that the front end will be triggering this request. And as such, it does not know the session ID, so we cannot include it. You could do something here where we do uh, something similar to uh, the user session here where we do need Boolean. But that being said, I don't really see a use case where we will have to fetch um, someone else's session. But then again, I guess we could include that for consistency sake. So let's just do that here for now, just to match what we have for the user session. Um, and let's go into mutation and add that in. So I'm gonna do a delete user session.ts here like that going to include it. So just going to grab the delete word and replace that. Um, we're going to go and write up this file. So just const delete user session resolver. Uh, let's do something like this export default delete user session resolver. There we go like so. And from here, we're going to take in an interface, which contains args, uh, what we call it args, and it contains uh, me, which is a Boolean. Uh, and then here we're going to do obj any again, and the args being args. And what we're going to do is also pass in the context, the context, uh, resolver context here like that. So now that we have this, we're going to do if args.me is not equal to true, then we're going to throw another error. And this one is going to be unsupported argument value. Once again, this is more just like future proofing. And you might kind of disagree and say, you know, we don't really have a use case for this, which is fine, in which case, you know, um, each to their own, I guess. But just because we've already done it, I'm going to continue to do this for now. Uh, this one here is meant to be a semicolon and I need to pass in resolver context here as well. So import resolver context from hash root GraphQL and types there like that. And once we've done that, let's just go here and we need to grab the session ID. But in this case, we can't grab it. Like I said, from the args, we're going to grab it from the context. So we go here and do const session ID is equal to context dot. And I'm just going to jog your memory here and jog my own a bit as well. Is you notice we have res.locals.user session. And if you look inside of context, we actually have access to uh, res as part of the response. So we can do context.res.locals uh, and then dot user session and then dot ID. So we're going to grab the session ID this way. And once we've grabbed it, then we can use this to clear. So we're going to do await users service dot delete user session. I'm going to pass in this session ID here. And then we're going to do context dot res dot clear cookie. If I can spell that correctly, clear cookie user session ID. And then we're going to return true. And you remember we have this set to a Boolean because we don't really have anything to return. Um, so we're just going to do that. And this one should be async. And we're going to pass in users service from hash root adapters users service there like so. Put that up top. And now we need to include delete user session. So let's go over there. I'm going to take delete user session and put it right there. Static async delete user session. And this one's going to take in a session ID. Session ID is going to be a string. Uh, and then inside of here, we're going to do, well, something quite similar to this, I guess. We can just uh, copy that and paste that here. But this one here, we're going to just get rid of this. And we're going to do await got.delete. And we're going to delete this session uh, with that session ID. We're not going to pass anything in. It's going to do .json and then return the body. We don't really have anything to return though, but we're just going to do it anyways, once again, for consistency sake here. So we have delete user session set up. We have this one here. We have that included there and we have it over here as well. So that should work for us. Um, let's check over here. And you notice that we should have a session uh, 77465, 625, uh, whatever it is. Um, just make sure this is running, which it is. I'm getting another error for some reason. Just need to save this again, perhaps. Yep, no, we're still getting the error. Um, I just need to do another restart, I think, unless I spelt it wrong. I did not. So I'm just going to do docker compose restart this one again. Cool. So now that is done, uh, we're going to go back here. And I'm just going to go to the network. Oh, actually, sorry, to application. I'm going to go over to the cookies. I'm going to just refresh this again. 
And this time I'm going to, uh, well, this is hard to see, but you can see it's 774625, whatever. Uh, we're just gonna go here, remove this. We're gonna do delete, use the session. Uh, and then this one returns a Boolean. So we don't really have to do anything. Just need to return me true uh, and then press play. And once we do that, it's true. And our cookie is gone. So there you go. Now we have delete user session set up and that is working. So that's all great and that's wonderful. Um, but there are a few concerns here that I've uh, mentioned in a previous video that I want to address from an architectural perspective. So if you notice here in our schema, you, let's just have a look at the data we're returning um, for each of the types. So in the case of user session, we return the ID. Um, this is well, quite problematic. And the reason is because like I said before, it's not really a piece of information that we want to have be available to the front end. So let's just say we're going here and we're uh, creating a user session. So we can type, say, create user session. Um, I think we had a password, a password, and a username of Bob. Let me just format this like that. So it looks nice and pretty. Uh, and let's return an ID. So let's just press play. And now we have this ID. So this ID is technically available to the front end. And this is highly problematic for a number of reasons because, well, specifically this token in another user's browser is actually also used as the session token. So it's quite a sensitive piece of information and definitely one that uh, if got into wrong hands can cause some, uh, some bad issues with impersonation. So what we need to do here is basically figure out a way to get rid of this ID. We don't really want to display it like this uh, for the user session. So I have a couple thoughts here as to how we can do that. One way is we can actually just get rid of the ID in entirely. So we don't really need the ID if you think about it, because we've got a query here for the user session. And once we kind of have that session in the front end, it just tells us if the user's logged in or not. Uh, and then from there we can, you know, do our business as per usual. Now the downside to this is we don't have an ID. So if you don't include an ID, uh, Apollo client by default has no way of caching this record because it doesn't know how to identify it. Um, obviously there are ways around that in terms of different caching strategies. Like for example, if it's a user session, let's have a look at the uh, user.id for example, that, that's a possibility. Um, but in all of these cases, you know, you kind of start to drift off and, and go into a different direction. And, and it's just perhaps not the most ideal solution. So there's another way as well, and I'm not saying which way is, is necessarily better or worse, but one way is we can actually reroute the ID into something else. So we can do, you know, ID uh, is an ID here like this, um, which is fine. Uh, but then for example, inside of our user session uh, here, we can actually add in something else. So for example, we can do uh, something very similar for ID and we take in the user session. So we actually return uh, the user here and then we can do return user.id for example or we can do uh, user.username as well which is also in this case a unique identifier so this is another possibility and um, we do have a question mark here because this one could potentially be null um that is problematic actually because well it technically shouldn't be null but um, i guess an exclamation mark here won't hurt either so that one here basically removes it from possibly being null. Um, so this is another way we can do it. And I'll show you what this would do is we press play and this will just give us the uh, username as an ID. So this actually touches upon my next point as well, which is that this username here is actually also unique, but let's get into that later. So this is another solution and another way that we can do it. Um, alternatively, you know, you can build your own ID that kind of uh, encapsulates or allows you to identify that record without passing back the session token. Um, you could generate a session token that's actually separate from the ID so that even if you know the ID, you can't really get the session token. That's another way as well. Um, there are a lot of ways really to tackle this, but I guess the common theme and what I really want to talk about is that we shouldn't have that session token be easily accessible to the front end. Um, so, you know, we're trying to do what we can to try and make that less accessible. So for example, like, you know, using HTTP only cookie. Um, but in this case here, so we have this ID, you know, set up like so, this could potentially be an option. Um, what I'm actually going to do is just remove this and I'm going to uh, remove ID from here entirely. Now, my reasoning for this is that we can do something like this, but it can be a bit confusing because the actual user session includes an ID and at first glance, it might not be obvious as to why the ID return is different. And a second reason is because in terms of the front end applications usage, it's not going to be needing to query user session all of the time. It's going to query it once when the page loads, for example, just to say, hey, um, can we fetch and see if the user's logged in? And then from there, it's not really likely we're going to do it again during that whole, uh, whole browser session. So with that being said, it kind of doesn't really make sense to have that included. Um, so in this case, I can just get rid of it without too much issue. So that's the approach I'm going to go with here. And now you see, if we try to get the ID, we just get back cannot query field ID. Uh, we can do something else. Obviously we can do user, user ID, username. And this is like a way to identify which user's logged in. So that's fine as well. Um, we just can't get the ID in this case. So we're going to go with this approach. And now let's talk a little bit about the user. So in user here, we have an ID and we have a username. Uh, if you remember quite a few videos ago, we talked about how the username here is unique. Um, if you go inside user service and we have a look at the user, um, I think it's defined inside of migrations. 
you notice that we have a unique username index set up. So we can't have the same username repeated across multiple rows. And in this case here, there are a kind of a couple things related to that discussion that are worth talking about. Uh, back then you'll remember I talked about why we still need an ID because the ID actually acts as the source of truth for that particular user, if you think about it, because the username is something that even though it's unique, it can be something which we could potentially allow the user to change. And if we actually use that as the, uh, the source of truth, the username as the source of truth from a backend perspective, that becomes problematic when we're trying to work with data that has a long-term uh, perspective on it. You know, we need all of that data to change if we wanted to change the username, for example. So in this case here, that, that definitely is a problem. Um, but something else to consider here is in the case of the front end, however, the actual username itself actually remains relatively stable across each session. We're not going to be changing that username very often. And obviously, you know, we can change, potentially change the username in the front end. That's fine. But then we can actually use that as an ID in order to fetch back records and we don't have to work with the ID itself. So this actually is one way in which we can kind of start to optimize our schema a little bit based upon our use cases. You could argue that we can still include it and that's fine, but I actually think it makes sense for us to go with the username since that's what we're using here. So what I would do is just remove the ID there and change the username to an ID. So in this case, we still haven't built anything on the front end. So just kind of removing properties here, gung ho, so to speak, is actually not so problematic. But if you kind of have a schema already set up, there might be some problems in doing this. You might have to slowly deprecate certain fields and then move things across over time. Um, there are definitely possibilities in doing that, but it would have to be a more gradual approach, which is why I kind of caution uh, against bad schema design in the first place. And it's important to think these things through. In this case, we don't really have a front end built out yet. So we have a lot more flexibility as to how we structure our GraphQL API, but don't make the mistake of thinking that just because it's GraphQL that somehow, you know, you can just change the API language at will. It's actually quite difficult to do, especially because GraphQL tends itself to have a multitude of clients and each client having different requirements. You just need to make sure your schema is always going to support all of them. So making these decisions upfront and thinking about them is incredibly important. So anyways, now that I've done this, let's have a look at our front end. Uh, obviously we can't fetch the ID here anymore, so we can get rid of that. Um, but then here the username still acts as an ID. So for the purposes of front-end caching, we can still use the username because now it's of type ID. And if you were wondering, that's the main difference between a type of ID and a type of string.